Welcome to the Bella Vista Gardening Program. I'm Jerry Horner and today with me is Corinne Troutman and she is a horticulturalist and a native plant specialist. She's my favorite horticulturalist because she's just really in, is involved with native plants. And this month we're going to be talking about um, white and night blooming, um, night and white bloomers. So things that are white blooming and things that bloom at night and upcoming events and also what to do in your garden in January. There's a few things you have to take care of. So um, the upcoming events, we're um, having the Northwest Arkansas Master Naturalist uh, training. Is This is an annual event and the annual training starts uh, on January 19th and there's, um, it's held on Saturdays. There's 13 um, Saturdays they have classes you have to get 40 hours of training so they offer a variety of different um, uh, subjects you can you can um, go to these classes but you need 40 hours and then it's on always on Saturdays so if for more information you can go to the uh, what to the website is shown on the screen it's www.worldpress.arkansasmasternaturalist.org that's all one word and um, you can get more information there. So it's a great program. It's a wonderful program. So if you combine it with the Master Gardeners and the Master Naturalists and all the Garden Club information, you can just get all kinds of training. So it's wonderful. Now you haven't gone through that training yet, have you? I've not gone through that training, but I've done a couple of training sessions okay, for so you, them specifically on native plants. Right, because you're my native plant expert. So, and today what we're talking about is the um, white bloomers and night bloomers. Now I have a white garden in my um, in my, my bed. So there's one along the the back, <coughs> excuse the side uh, area. So it's a little distance away, but the white blooms just pulls it in when it starts getting dusk. It's a beautiful garden. They have just all white plants, and um, I'd I'd uh, recommend that to anyone if they have a little area along the edges. They can do a white garden, and it pulls it in. Mm -hmm. um, you pull your eye in. So the white bloomers that we have, um, um, starting with trees, we have, first we're talking about the fringe tree. This is one of my favorites, and right. it is a native tree. Mm -hmm. It's really wonderful. It blooms um, just in the early spring, yeah. just about after the Bradford pears have mm -hmm. bloomed. So you so can it's actually- it's before the dogwood and- It's before the dogwood. After the Bradford. And, and it is just a showstopper mm -hmm. and you- It's a slow grower. It is a slow grower. Um, it only gets to be at the max about 20 feet tall, but mm -hmm. typically it takes a really long time for it to get mm -hmm. that tall. Um, but you but should, when you plant it, realize that this is going yes. to be a big tree eventually. Give it some space, yeah. give it some room. Also yeah. showcase it in your garden mm -hmm. because in spring when this blooms, it's people stop and mm -hmm. ask what this is yeah. and the smell of the flowers are just incredible yeah. also. Okay. Well the next one we have is the yellow wood um, tree and um, that is another huge tree. Now does Compton Garden have the state champion yellowwood? That's correct. So the state champion yellowwood is actually in Bentonville at Compton Gardens and it and that is, is a huge tree. Huge tree. Um, again, one to definitely make space in your landscape for because mm -hmm. it's going to be a beautiful shade it's, tree. Again, a slow grower. A slow grower. It has beautiful white blooms that are, look like peas on it because the tree is actually in the legume family. Mm -hmm. um, but whenever it's in full bloom, you can sit under that tree and it smells like honey and you oh. can just hear the buzz oh, of the, the bees, bees and the pollinators oh. surrounding yeah. that tree. Yeah. And the next one we have is, of course, the dogwoods. Mm -hmm. Most people are familiar with so many dogwoods here, but um, it's a great white bloomer. It's a white bloomer. It's and an understory tree, so mm -hmm. it's one that you can actually plant in the shade and right. it'll thrive a little bit better because mm -hmm. it's protected from that really hot sun that we get right. in. Now this one's planted look, looks like in full sun, mm -hmm. but if you start it when it's very small, it can. Sun, Just it can adapt be much. aware that in August, whenever we heat up, you're going to get some scalding on the leaves if you have it in full sun. But mm -hmm. if you plant it next to an oak tree where mm -hmm. it gets some shade in that afternoon, mm -hmm. it's going to be so much happier. Yeah. The next one we have is the um, Carolina Silver Bell. Now, and I'm not familiar with this one. So mm -hmm. this one is the native version. A lot of times you will see the... Um, 
Asian version or mm. the Japonica. This is a native that you can plant in place of it. Again, spring blooming plant um, when the tree is in full bloom, it's just yeah. covered in these beautiful white bell-shaped flowers on there. It's a great pollinator That's plant. A nice tree. So if you look at the tag, you have to look for the Halicia carolina. Correct. That gives you the hint that it's not that it's the a native. Japonica. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a pretty tree, and that gets about 25 to 30 feet tall too. Eventually. It does, but eventually. So yeah. this is an extremely slow growing tree, mm -hmm. and a lot of the specimens that I've seen, especially in this area, um, have not reached that size. Mm -hmm. So it's one that you can plant just knowing that possibly you might lose a tree eventually, and this mm -hmm. will take its place. Yeah. Okay, and then this one is the black haw. This is a native I have in my garden. I have two in the woods um, by my house, and it's just beautiful. A lot of times you do see these out in the woods, and again, mm -hmm. it's spring blooming. Uh, it's got this big panicle of little bitty blossoms on mm -hmm. it that the bees absolutely love this mm -hmm. plant. Um, it's a multiple season of interest plant that's mm -hmm. really underutilized in our landscape. That You get these beautiful white blooms in the spring and then they produce berries that go from green to dark blue whenever they're ripe. Mm -hmm. And then you get tremendous fall color on this plant as well. A lot of times people will notice this, of course, in the spring when it blooms, but in the fall when you get this bright red fall color mm -hmm. on the plant. So it's like also. a burning bush almost or mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay, and that, um, it is in the viburnum family, so there's a lot mm -hmm. of white blooming viburnums yes. too. Yeah. So, and this is the summer sweet, um, Calithra. Yes. And so this is um, the that's Calithra. The bloom there. Yeah, it is incredible. Whenever it's in bloom, it smells like honey. Mm -hmm. It's a medium sized. Uh, shrub, or you can get a dwarf variety that stays much mm -hmm. lower. That looks to the like ground. that's a pretty good size mm -hmm. uh, established. It, it is. Yeah. It, it does really well with your hostas as a background plant. Mm. Two more. And then that's the calithra. The... So that's what it looks like. It actually grows in and fills in and is a really nice shrub, especially in um, a part shade to shade garden. Yeah. It pulls that white in. Yeah. And then the next one we have is the beard tongue. Now I have the a variety of the beard tongue. Um, and this is a penstemon. Mm -hmm. So the penstemons are a really great perennial plant that they'll mm -hmm. stay around. They can take full sun to part shade. Um, the plant itself, if we don't get a hard winter, is evergreen, mm -hmm. that the crown stays around. And then if you've got one of the beautiful varieties like Husker Red, yeah, the that's what color I have. really deepens in the mm -hmm. wintertime and actually shows off this plant even right, more. I have the Husker Red, and it's a beautiful leaf mm -hmm. on that, but it still blooms white. It still blooms yeah. white. Um, there are varieties that bloom uh, mm -hmm. purple or red, but mm -hmm. this is a great white blooming beautiful native plant that'll keep coming back year after year. Right. Now the asters, these are asters. There's so many different asters mm -hmm. and there's a lot of native asters. There's a lot of native asters and the color range in the asters are white to blues to purples. And you mm -hmm. can find a lot of varieties out there. Um, an aster is a great one to put in place or with your mums because they bloom about the same time. They mm -hmm. bloom in August and September, mm -hmm. um, just beautiful. And the white blooming ones, the insects are just drawn to it, especially right. the bees that are looking for that last little bit of pollen before right. they have to slow down production. And the honey. asters are probably less work because you don't have to worry about deadheading you know, all summer long waiting mm -hmm. for them to bloom in the fall. And, right. and there's so many different varieties. And you can get too. some dev dwarf varieties too that mm -hmm. don't get as tall and leggy mm -hmm. in your plant that there's still that white blooming color right. in the uh, fall. And then we have the, um, one of my favorites too. This mm -hmm. is the bloodroot. I, I love bloodroot and I promote planting the native bloodroot anytime you can. Mm -hmm. They like shade. So this is a great plant to put in with your hosta garden because they come up and they bloom before the hostas are even out of the ground. So you've mm -hmm. got the seasonal interest. The bright white petals on this plant just draw your eye mm -hmm. into the woods if you see it blooming. Um, it's just a beautiful plant. It blooms first thing when those bees are starting to come out of hibernation looking for something to eat. Mm -hmm. It's a great, 
great plant. And the root, the reason it's called a blood root is because if you dig up that root, it is bright red. Mm -hmm. The Native Americans would actually dry that root and ground it up and use it as war paint. Oh, really? Now, doesn't it kind of disappear after it blooms? It does disappear, and that's why it's great for your hostas or your ferns, because mm -hmm. by the time that those get up into production, the blood root is already starting to go back dormant and go to sleep. So it just so you don't even see it after extra. the summer. And Absolutely, after, it just mm -hmm. disappears. Mm -hmm. So, and then this is candy tuft. Now, candy tuft um, isn't native. Candy tuft is not native, but it's one of those tried and true heirloom variety plants and they're mm -hmm. great for a rock garden because they are a ground cover, mm -hmm. they stay low, they can take some sun, whereas a lot of ground covers you have to really have them in shade. Mm -hmm. But Candy Tuft is just an amazing tried and true wonderful landscape plant. Yeah. It's, I have it on, on my white garden mm -hmm. and it, it's just a way it just flows over the rocks, you know, it just adds a lot of softness to mm -hmm. the garden. Absolutely. Okay. Another native that's really great is the spiderwort. And the spiderwort actually has a different color variety in it, but if you get the true white variety of spiderwort, mm -hmm. it's a great plant to add to your landscape. Wonderful perennial. They call it a spiderwort because in this picture shows it just perfectly that you can see the um, stamens and how fuzzy they are that they look like little spider's mm -hmm. legs. That, well, to me, they, they always reminded me like an orchid bloom. Mm -hmm. You know, they had that orchid bloom look to them yeah. so um, but I have uh, the spider wart and I have white but that you know I also see them in the other colors mm -hmm. you know the purple and lavender and, mm -hmm. and um, it's like a pink right deep pink there's and there's also colors. been um, some tremendous breeding work done on the spider warts that you can actually get some dwarf ones that look more like ground cover mm. that blend in or you can get some of the taller ones that go in about the midsection of your garden okay and then aren't some of them in like speckled flowers have i seen there are kind of some new varieties that are coming out that they're trying to stabilize that speckling of the flower mm -hmm. right now but they're getting very close to it so you're starting to see some of those come out in the nursery so once they take a, a native plant and they start hybridizing it. Mm -hmm. Did they still consider it a native plant? Or? So at that point, it's, it's actually a called a native var. So a it's a cultivar var. off of that native plant that uh -huh. then you can provide. Now there is some kind of um, argument or at least discussion in the realm of native plants of whether it's better to plant the true native or plant the native are. I say if you've got room in your garden, plant both mm -hmm. because you're still going to get that beautiful native plant, then you're going to get this nice species plant, and both of them are still going to pull those pollinators into your garden so it's, like what it's you want. Still partially native. It's still so partially, partially native. native. Yeah, it's so. just a baby native. <laughs> baby native. Okay. Well, so we're trying to get more natives into our garden, that's for sure. We're, we're trying to work on that. Okay, and then as far as the, um, this is how the, the uh, leaves look. It's, mm -hmm. you know, long, long leaves on that spiderwort. So it does add a lot of interest to your garden. It does. It adds um, structure, and as I said, it's kind of a mid-section plant. So mm -hmm. the leaves itself add that structure and right. uh, formality to your garden also. And then after they bloom in the spring, sometimes I'll deadhead them mm -hmm. right away, and they'll bloom again. They will. If you yeah. can um, deadhead them in the spring after they've bloomed, mm -hmm. they'll flush back out another, another growth bloom. and have a nice bloom yeah, too. Yeah, so they double blooms on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, then if we talk about our night bloomers. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the white garden is great you know, in, this, in the daytime, and then like at dusk, it really pulls you in. Mm -hmm. But your night bloomers, that's the ones that, you know, after you come home from work, if you're still working, <laughs> and you, you know, have your little glass of wine in the garden, and it starts getting to be dusk, mm -hmm. then you see these night bloomers, and you can really appreciate the blooms you of can. these that are that start later in the, in the day, so you don't miss the, mm -hmm. the show. You don't miss the show. Yeah. Um, you're right in time. As you said, it's really nice to have a glass of wine or a mint julep and walk mm -hmm. through the garden. And the smell of the plants that bloom in the evening or the mm -hmm. night are just incredible. And plants do that because they're actually conserving energy. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, they're solar cells, so they're collecting a lot of energy during the sun time. And then it takes a lot of energy to produce these blooms oh, yeah. for the garden. And so if they're not producing energy during 
the night, then they have more energy to put towards blooming right. the plant. Now, and then most, a lot of the, the night bloomers, don't they attract more of the moths than the butterflies? They do. So, so the if moths you've... need those to... Right. Survive. If you've ever turned your porch light on and got irritated that there's all these insects and moths coming to your porch and you're thinking, well, don't they realize that that's a light bulb? <laughs> well, actually, it's the color. A lot of white flowers actually are drawing in those moths and um, insects that are flying in the dusk or in the evening time. Mm -hmm. They think that they have hit the jackpot and found <laughs> <Right>. this beautiful <laughs> white, flower. white flower when in actually it's a light bulb. So or even a yellow bulb. Even Something a yellow, yellow bulb thing. sometimes will draw it in. Yeah. And they say to change it to a green bulb and then they won't be trying to pollinate your porch light. <laughs> okay. They'll go back into your garden where they're supposed to be. <laughs> okay. Well, this is the... Um, the evening primrose, mm. and there is a um, um, variety of colors for the primrose. There is. Uh, yeah. You can get yellow primrose. Mm -hmm. You can get the pink primrose, which I think mm -hmm. you've got an image yeah. of. Yeah. Um, these are wonderful because they bloom again in the evening and mm -hmm. at the night, and when the sun gets really strong during the day, they go ahead and close those blooms up, mm -hmm. and then they'll re-bloom again in the mm -hmm. evening yeah. time. And there is one that's called the Missouri Primrose. It's yellow. Yes, and that is a native. A, um, native. a lot of the primrose are native plants, so mm -hmm. that's a fun way to introduce that native yeah. plant back into your garden. Now, this is one that's more of a um, tropical. Yes. So this one is the uh, Angel's Trumpet, mm -hmm. the Datura. And this is something we, you'd have to bring this in in the winter time. You do. It is a tropical plant, so mm -hmm. it is temperature sensitive. But if you've got some space to pull it in mm -hmm. and you've got enough sunlight, you can keep those blooms going. And they're just in huge the evening. blooms. They're just beautiful. There's a lot of variety lot of in the color and the bloom of the plant. There's yes. also some height variety that you can play with mm -hmm. in the garden also. And different um, different uh, colors and different doubles. They get doubles and They're singles. also easy to propagate, so you can take cuttings. So if you don't have space to be able to pull it inside, you can take cuttings of the plant and then put that back out in your garden. Well, don't the angels trumpet, do they have the seed pods like the moon pod? They do have the seed pods, so you can collect seeds on them. Um, but they're almost like a round, um, sharp, Yes. Pointed. Um, yeah. You you have to be adventurous to collect the seeds of them mm -hmm. because they are spiny. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can collect a lot of seed, and it is again easy to propagate from seed or cutting. But it just takes a while if you go from seed mm -hmm. rather than a cutting. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. Then this is the moonflower. This is the the one that gets confused with. The, they call it angel trumpet and moonflower, and then you know. That is common the fun thing is. about common <laughs> names. They're kind of like nicknames for people that mm -hmm. sometimes we have multiple nicknames and share those, but with the scientific of the Latin name, that's kind of like the formal name of the plant. Right. Now the moonflower is an actual vine, so you mm -hmm. will want to put it on a trellis. But again, it needs, it's, support. Yeah. It needs that support. It's going to grow up, but it has a spectacular smell to it whenever it blooms in the evening. And again, it has those seed pods that are mm -hmm. spiny and a lot of seeds inside. They're yeah. almost like a, um, what's that, the maple tree that has a little... Oh, it's almost like a sweet gum. Like a sweet gum mm -hmm. ball. That's what it reminds mm -hmm. me of, a sweet gum ball. Now, these are not native, so, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of these um, night bloomers just aren't native plants. They're not, so, yeah. Um, and this is the bloom of the, the moonflower. They're just huge yeah, but it, blooms. If you can imagine a gorgeous vine with that mm -hmm. huge flower on it, it just adds yeah, so much to your garden. Or a fence mm -hmm. or whatever, it'd be beautiful. And then this one is the night blooming jasmine. Oh, and, and if you've ever been around a jasmine, whenever it's in bloom, it is just mm -hmm. intoxicating mm -hmm. and it's just wonderful to smell. And again, that evening scent that as you're walking through the garden after it's gotten a little bit cooler in the evening, it's just a tremendous mm -hmm. plant to walk with and showcase in your garden. Well, they use this for perfumes a lot mm -hmm. too because uh, it's just such a wonderful scent and there's some um, there's other plants that remind me of jasmine sometimes I'll smell another plant that kind of remind me but jasmine is just mm -hmm. just such a just unique uh, scent and that's how it would grow in a vine mm -hmm. I mean, just beautiful so again it needs support mm -hmm. um, it can be cold sensitive so if you've got it into a pot you can pull it in if we have um, 
a light winter like what we're experiencing now, uh, typically the root system will survive, especially if you mulch it heavily, mm -hmm. that you can get it to come back. It may die back down, mm -hmm. but it'll come back again. Mm -hmm. So it's an iffy plant, I think we're in this, they say we're sown six mm. or seven. Yeah. They say, I'm, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> My, I have a, I think it's safer to, to use, you know, zone six plants rather mm -hmm. than zone seven. Yeah. As, as you go further south, the number gets higher. But um, some of the, like last winter, it was a, it was a zone six winter because mm -hmm. we lost a lot of things that yeah. are just marginal. So you have to be careful. Now this one is the um, queen of the night. And this one is really an interesting plant. So this plant is just so much fun, and it's a great house plant. Um, this is one that will look good on your porch in the summertime mm -hmm. and really thrive out there in a container on your summer. But um, it blooms at night. Again, it's trying to attract those moths and those beetles and the insects to pollinate it. Um, typically, you'll find it in the desert. Mm -hmm. So it likes kind of a drier, Dry, hot. really hot time. I keep mine um, in in the wintertime. I always pull it in, and it makes a beautiful house plant. Everybody asks. But doesn't it what just it bloom is. once a year? It blooms once a year, so you're not going to get a whole lot of <laughs> blooms right. on it. So this is one that you really want to have a party whenever it's blooming <laughs> right. and have the cocktails as you just absorb this. I've, incredible I've heard plant. of Queen of the Night parties when yeah. you know you get a last minute call and it, well my. Um, my uh, queen of the night is blooming. Mm -hmm. We have to come over and see it, you know, and join us. Yeah. So, but it's an interesting mm -hmm. plant, so. And that's and a it, great shot of the plant itself whenever it's in bloom. And it is just stunning whenever mm -hmm. it blooms. And it's you can just see such why an unusual bloom too. you would enjoy having a cocktail and looking at this right. plant and discussing right. it. And this, the scent is, um, it's got a strong scent. It does have a strong scent, and it's again that beautiful perfume smell to it, mm -hmm. and just just a fun plant, um, fun to propagate and give to a friend. Also, as a wonderful gift. Now, did you say it was in the cactus family? It is a in, in the cactus, cactus family. family. It doesn't have the spines of a cactus, okay. but you can definitely see some of the telltale signs of it being in the cactus family. The fact that it's got the flat leaf, the bloom itself looks very cactus. The fact mm -hmm. that it's blooming at night right. instead of during the day. But it doesn't have that fleshy, that It doesn't fleshy have that leaf. fleshy leaf. But mm -hmm. it's still in the cactus family. Okay, then this one, the dragon fruit cactus. So this one, not too many people know about the bloom of it, but they've probably come across the fruit because it's starting to get fruit. much more popular and you can actually find it in the grocery stores. Mm -hmm. But the plant is fun to grow also. It makes a good patio container plant yes. during the um, summertime and then it blooms in the evening mm -hmm. and those blooms are what's gonna produce the fruit. So if you're, really have a green thumb and you want to go for something spect spectacular, mm -hmm. grow this as a patio plant and then pull it inside in the winter time and see if you can't get to produce some of those wonderful fruit. So the fruit. fruit would develop in the winter. So the fruit would develop in the but winter. you need a bright, a bright window? Or so a, you need a bright window. A um, again, it likes some dry, it's a tropical plant, mm -hmm. um, but it's but a fruit, lot of fun. I've had the fruit, I didn't realize what it was, but when we were on our cruise last year, they had this fruit on the on the buffet, and I'm thinking, well, that's not you know, the kiwi. Well, I mm -hmm. wonder what that is. So that's what it was. It was delicious. It's, it's delicious, and the red one that's red on the exterior, and then you cut it in, and you get that bright white, uh, creamy center of mm -hmm. it. And a lot of people are putting it into their smoothies now because there's some said, health benefits. And you said now this fruit is available sometimes in locally? I have seen it locally in the grocery stores that you can actually pick up some dragon fruit. So again, whenever you have all your guests come over to share in your night blooming plants, mm -hmm. you can serve them some of the fruit right. also. Now this fruit is uh, unusual look, so it should be easy to find in the store. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, the next one we have is the four o'clocks. Now this is... Um, is this the four o'clock? This no. is the flowering tobacco. Flowering tobacco. Mm -hmm. It's not the four o'clock. Okay, I don't have the flowering tobacco. So the flowering tobacco um, is a night blooming plant and it's again one of those heirloom varieties that you have around and it has a really nice smell to it. It is a midsection plant in your garden. It easily seeds itself that it'll come back 
each year mm -hmm. uh, in an, a wide variety of color on this, as you can see from the picture. And but it's, it's a prolific bloomer. It's a pro prolific bloomer. It blooms during the summertime, whenever you're looking. And it has a soft scent to it. It's not mm -hmm. really not like overpowering. Tobacco. Not like tobacco. <laughs> not it doesn't tobacco. smell like tobacco at all. <laughs> no. We should say that. Yeah. yeah. But. And don't try to smoke this either. It's, <laughs> no, it's you're really good. growing it for those beautiful flowers. Right. But it could, you know, take the place of a petunia. Yes. Because the petunia sometimes mm -hmm. get a little leggy, and I don't think this plant gets as leggy as a petunia. It doesn't get as leggy and as And it doesn't petunia. need to be deadheaded as much. It doesn't. Think. It's a self-deadheading, and it continues right. to continue it's to bloom. To con mm -hmm. Easier to, con um, to have a lot of blo blooms. Yeah. Okay, and there's a picture of a, a stand of them, mm -hmm. which is beautiful. As you can see, they really fill in a space, and you get all there's just this massive amount of bloom that adds mm -hmm. to your garden so much. And then they'll just reseed and spread. Mm -hmm. so. But they're probably easy to control. They are easy to control. Uh, you can definitely tell whenever the plant is there, you can move it. You can try to transplant it, or you can mm -hmm. just put it back into your compost pile if you don't mm -hmm. want the plant there. Yeah. Okay, then one of, this one of my favorite night bloomers is the gardenia. And they're just, they just smell so good. They're just wonderful. They're beautiful. Another good basis for perfumes, too. Great basis for perfumes. Mm -hmm. You see this a lot in southern gardens. It does like the heat. It really thrives. Um, a little bit cold sensitive here, again, depending on how hard of a winter that we get. But you can pull the gardenia in and use it as a house plant. Mm -hmm. and just make sure it's got plenty of sun inside. But it's got these beautiful, glossy green leaves mm -hmm. to it and just the absolutely beautiful white flower stands right. out so much on this plant. And they are trying to develop more of the um, uh, cold tolerant mm -hmm. gardenias. I think there's more varieties coming out that they're working on to, yeah. to be more cold tolerant. But even if it dies back, sometimes if you have it in a protected area and you really mulch it heavily, mm -hmm. you know, it could die back, but then you can still enjoy it. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. It just takes a little more care. Mm -hmm. So. And then now the four o'clocks. This is one of my favorite. Uh, and you said there's a native, um, there's native four o'clocks? There o is native four o'clocks. It's uh, got a very small pink flower on it. Sometimes you'll see a yellow flower, but typically it's pink. Mm -hmm. It's much more small. Um, four o'clocks on the whole just have a wonderful abundance of varieties that you can get a lot of colors. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they're called four o'clocks is traditionally they bloom in the evening time, just mm -hmm. like we've been talking start about. Start opening up about four. About four really o'clock. I have a hot pink one in my garden and um, it looks something like that. That's mm -hmm. not my, my garden picture, but yeah. They're Again, just a they just plant. they fill in, they spread, they're easy to control. Also, um, really easy to collect the seeds and grow oh, yeah. it from seeds. <laughs> well, I know that because I've told the story before that this is my first really uh, memory of um, working in the garden with my mom, and she would have me collect the the seeds because they're like little peppercorns, and they're easy to to collect mm -hmm. for little hands, you know. So that was my job when I was uh, in the garden with my mom. That was one of my first mm -hmm. memories of working in the garden with my mom, is collecting the four o'clock seeds. So every time I collect them, I think about her. Yeah. So anyway, so we've had some great um, uh, information about white bloomers and night bloomers, and there are many others. I mean, you can Google well, the subject and, mm -hmm. and find more. But yeah, there's we're so many just white. scratching the surface on right. it, but it's a fascinating addition to the garden mm -hmm. if you can do that because it gets people out in the garden in the evenings and mm -hmm. night enjoying their plants as right. well. And that's when you probably want to go out and enjoy your garden when it's not the heat of the yeah. day. You know, you get a little cooler and you can enjoy it more. So. But um, you can also, you know, Google the same subject and mm -hmm. find more things. But these are some of our favorites that we wanted to share. So, and then what we need to do in our garden in um, in um, January um, is uh, just a few things. You just got to worry about the ice and snow. Mm -hmm. And we had um, a terrible cold winter last year, but I don't think we had too much ice and snow. We didn't, but it's always a possibility that mm -hmm. we can get ice and snow, and so you need to keep an eye on yeah. your landscape plants. Right, so the snow, if you do get snow on your mm -hmm. bushes and it bends them down, you can shake the snow off if you're worried about them bent mm -hmm. breaking or something, but if it's ice, you just gotta let it melt. You have to. We can do a lot more damage in trying to protect our plants than we can in letting nature go ahead and take its right. course. 
So if you try to get the ice off the plants, you're probably going to break them and, mm -hmm. and damage them. So. Yeah. Um, and the other thing about the snow on the, on the driveways is don't use salt on oh, the driveways. No. Um, a lot of salts can actually burn your plants and damage mm -hmm. your landscape plants. So a good alternative to that would be if you have some old fertilizer in your house or you didn't use all oh, of your fertilizer? The granular fertilizer. So if you didn't use all of your grass fertilizer, if mm -hmm. you put that out, there's enough salt in there to help melt the snow, mm -hmm. but not enough to actually damage the plants. And then you're getting a bonus you're that you're putting it. some fertilizer back into the soil as well. Right. So you'll have a beautiful area right around your driveway. Right around the driveway. <laughs> <Beautiful>. <laughs> or you can use sand. I've heard people use sand yes. just for the traction. Yeah. So sand is another alternative, and that won't hurt your garden. Right. So. Okay. And then uh, if you see burnt foliage on your, on your plants, sometimes you'll see a, some winter damage on your plants. It's best just to leave it, you know, until the spring, because if you try to cut it, you know, before the winter is over, you might have more problems. So, right. um, and then um, you have to pay attention to the freezes too, and the and the moisture in the plants. You do, so. um, because you want the plants to have enough moisture that they can hold up to being frozen. Right. Um, if you think about it, if you put the water in, the cells plump back up, and mm -hmm. it gives them just a layer of insulation more to protect that plant. Yeah. Okay, and the winter annuals, just have to deadhead your winter annuals, and um, and um, you can get your, your beds ready for spring with your fertilizer mm -hmm. and um, wood mulch on top of your bed. Right. So. And then it's um, you can still plant trees and shrubs in the winter. Yeah, as long yeah. as the ground's not frozen, mm -hmm. it's a great time to plant right. trees and shrubs, yeah. especially in some of the nicer days that mm -hmm. we have. Yeah, we, we go up and down. Just go up and down. But anyway, the Bella Vista Garden Club um, next meeting will be uh, January um, 23rd on a Wednesday. And we meet at 11 o'clock, have a little lunch at the uh, Bella Vista Community Church. And our next program is going to be um, the um, women's program at the Sheriff's Department Garden. And that's going to be presented by Phyllis Stair. And she's um, a master, um, master gardener. And she's in the the uh, Rogers Garden Club, and um, then we'll also have our, our horticulture program by Tony Lacasse. He's always interesting, yeah. so and he loves native plants too. So, um, and the guests are always welcome. So, thank you, Corinne, for joining me today. We always learn so much when you come. Uh, um, Jerry, my pleasure. I love yeah. talking plants with you and yeah. sharing the knowledge. Yeah. It's that's our job is to share the knowledge about plants. So. And I hope you've enjoyed the show, and I'll join us again next month. And until then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses.